everybody and welcome to the sex episode of my podcast. My name is Islam Hijazi and as usual I am going to be your host. You are currently watching this live all the way from Sydney, Australia on YouTube, LinkedIn and Twitter. Today's topic will be analytical ecosystem evolution. Often in time we get swamped by choices we have to implement business strategies and initiatives with not only a variety of options to pick from, but also with new architecture patterns and quests for paradigm shifts. Most businesses seem to blindly follow marketing trends rather than focusing on delivering value and what actually works. And that has resulted in most cases to add unnecessarily cost rather than reductions and failures rather than successes. Now, picking the best architecture pattern is key. But what's more important is to align that with business strategy, vision, and user requirements or needs. To discuss this topic, I'm very pleased to be joined today by Sebastian Barreda, and he's joining us all the way from Argentina. Sebastian is an ecosystem architect working for Teradata for over than a decade now. He is part of the data and architecture strategy team where he provides practical advice to customers in several industries such as retail, manufacturing, communication, media, bank, entertainment, and so on. He has extensive experience in ETL, BI, data warehousing, big data, uh, logical data modeling, and he is someone who can actually link business needs with technology. And he does that by obviously leveraging variety of solutions that we have uh, out there. So all in all, I'd say Sebastian is the guy that, you know, I would pick up the phone and call him if I need to have a proper advice when it comes to planning and implementing a data strategy. Now, before we get started, <clears throat> sorry, before we get started, as usual, I would like to ask you to do simple things. So if you're watching this live uh, on YouTube or on LinkedIn, simply do click uh, the like button and share it with your connections. And if you're watching this on YouTube, do subscribe to my channel by clicking on you know that subscribe button over there. And if you're watching this on, on YouTube, oh, sorry, on LinkedIn or Twitter, simply add me or follow me uh, to your connections. And that since this is a live podcast, you will be able to have or see most of the comments that you have add in the chat. So please feel free to add your comments uh, because that will be visible to myself and to my guest and we will be able to uh, involve that into our discussion. So do not be shy. So without further delay, let's get started. Sebastian, good evening to you, sir. How are you? Hey, man. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Great, great. I'm doing great as well. Thanks for joining us, Sebastian. I know it's pretty late over there in Argentina. I guess it's about 8 p.m. So really appreciate the time uh, taking uh, and, and having you on our show today. No problem. I, I'm, I'm talking to you from the past because I know it's Wednesday here, but it's Thursday there. So it's, you know, like traveling <laughs> time. Absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. Um, Sebastian, I, I would like to start with the way I got to actually know you. So one day I was doing, um, you know, some research on the Internet as any technical person would do just, you know, to stay updated with the newest trends and buzzwords. And I came to your blog and, and the title of that blog was uh, was um, data. What? And after that, you said, whatever you call it, stay away from data mess. So I'd like to, to start by asking you, what was the motivation for writing that blog? Well, that's a good question. And, and you know, uh, I find myself in most of the times uh, talking with customers and colleagues about, you know, what data architecture is, what different patterns we have on architecture. And, and most of the time we have spent a lot of, you know, time thinking why we have such many options, why those options fail, why we should do this, why we should do that. And, and, and also from myself, I started to think, uh, do I really know why this happens or, or not? So, so I think that it was a good like, thought exercise to, to put that in paper or what maybe I would say virtually, you know, in, in a blog post, I'm uh, trying to, to, you know, to, to and maybe to, to picture or to frame a story about what data architecture is and, and how you can 
how we came from the 90s or the 80s up to today, what we lost in the middle, what we gained in the middle, and, and, and after all, what really matters, which is, you know, have a good understanding of what you need to do and, and plan for that. And, and, and as you say, try to stay away from what, what I call the data mess, which is, you know, just doing things for, for you know, for things sake, instead of planning and, and understanding what you need to accomplish and why you need to accomplish that. So, so I think that was my motivation to, to you know, to put that in, in words. I guess that's, that's a great motivation. And, and um, I would like to, to go a step back and, and start with, with the history, a little bit of, of the data warehousing and the, the maturity that we have now. So as hopefully everybody does know that, um, you know, data warehousing started back in the 1980s. Uh, specifically in the late 80s and and um, since then it has been maturing more and more and and now we are I would say in, in a level where I can clearly and confidently say data warehousing is actually a mature technology a mature architecture that actually has been delivering values for over the past three decades um, would, would you say that is true and 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 also uh, some other question I would like to, to get um, some some answer from you since you're more involved in the field seeing customers day to day i believe um, do you think that there are still some organization failing in implementing traditional data warehousing i would say for all the questions that is absolutely right uh, i would say that we have uh, a good state of maturity on, on the data warehouse industry i would say that we have come to a point where I won't say everything has been developed because we can always uh, modernize uh, things like data warehouses, for example. But uh, I will say that we are still striving a lot on on you know on implementing some of data warehousing solutions, and and also I I still see a lot of companies that still have some issues to implement a warehouse, or even they don't have a data warehouse. And oh. and again, it it always ties to, to the same thing that it's. Uh, why you should do that and and what is missing on your plan that you're not getting to the point and 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 just to say and this is a, a story that's also true for the next maybe jump that we're going to do when we talk about data days but some warehouse implementations have failed because uh, the business hasn't been involved or maybe the, the it people was uh, involved only in drive driven driving sorry the, the implementation and then you come to a point where, okay, we have this beautiful piece of technology with this beautiful piece of information inside, but that delivers no value. So uh, it maybe sounds like ironic, but it's something that is still happening, you know? Uh, and and I, I would say that even in a very mature uh, technology or in mature architecture that like data warehouse that has been around for, as you say, decades, uh, we're still seeing those kind of issues, those kind of failures. Uh, not so big because we have learned a lot in, in, in the middle, but we're still seeing that kind of, of you know, uh, things going around. But the good thing about that is that you can just look to, to, you know, to your side. I will see a, a good implementation on, on, a, on a neighbor. So you can just grab things from there and, and, and learn and do that. But uh, but I would say most of the company has been, uh, you know, uh, successful on the warehouse uh, road. So it's, it's that's, fair that's, to say that we have failure, but, but we have seen a lot of success. Yeah, that, that's interesting because we're still seeing, ironically, still some failures. So it's a mature technology, it's a mature architecture, and, and there's a lot of people who are, who are actually enabled in the technology itself so we've got the expertise but still some people failing to that and i think the reasons behind the failures is obviously not technology it's something more which is something we will get uh, to i guess in, in the next few minutes could be about around our business strategy or vision or objective that this specific organization is trying to achieve but it's interesting fact that even with mature technologies we organization are still failing and and the reason obviously it's it's not the technology itself so let's let's highlight this point and talk about it in in the next few minutes but before we jump into that since we're talking about the successes of data warehouse uh, uh, technology or architecture currently in the market we, would you also give us some insight about um 
uh, the percentage maybe roughly uh, from your experience I, I know I'm not looking for analyst kind of percentage your or personal percentage from what you see in the field as into um, uh, as into how many customers out there are, are fully relying on traditional data warehousing as architecture and technology uh to be fair i, I would refer to to the, the customers that i work m more with which is which i would say is uh you know enterprise kind of customers i, I won't talk about you know, you know my, my uncle's uh, business and this is not to be you know uh to talk back about those kind of business but it's something yeah. that i'm not more used to i i target in my expertise more you know like middle to, 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 to enterprise customers and, and i would say that 95 to 100 percent of those customers has a data warehouse in place and from those kind of customers i would say that probably 90 percent of, of them have a, a, a more or less successful implementation with you know some uh, things here and there that you can improve for sure but i would say that at least they are delivering value from from the implementation they have and and and, and mark my words that that's the important part how we can then if the implementation is successful or not, I would say it's because that implementation is delivering value. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Um, maybe before we proceed, uh, let's say hello to some of the people that are joining us. Uh, we've got uh, Sarah from Sydney. Hello, Sarah. Uh, we've got uh, Eagle Ray, 55. He's saying hello from uh, Christchurch. Hello, Eagle. We've got Serge as well joining us from Sydney. <laughs> Hello, Serge. We'll come to those uh, more um, in the next few minutes. So let's let's carry on the conversation here on the um, data warehousing, Sebastian. Um, so uh, three decades, maybe a little bit more, four decades of data warehousing architecture technology. W what are the recent advancements in, in the data warehousing industry and technology specifically? Is it is it trying to to speed up its game or bring its game up? to uh, compete with, with some of the new buzzwords that we will discuss shortly, uh, or it's it's still very traditional and sticking to what it does best and, and it hasn't changed much? No, I would say that it has changed a lot. And even, in fact, this couple of last years, we have seen a lot of noise for, for saying that, uh, but, but noise in a, in a good way. Uh, of a lot of new vendors or new solutions that are coming in, into place for the, the data warehouse industry and, and with all the, this new, let's say, uh, cloud uh, strategy that the companies are, are embracing, uh, I would say that it has opened a, a new kind of market for, for warehouse, warehouse and warehouse data warehouse solutions. Yeah. And, and, I, and I would say that it has be for good because we have we are seeing now that workouts are are evolving into something that it's uh embracing a little bit more of, of uh uses use cases and and for for me this is the same that we have seen a couple of, of, of years ago or maybe a, a decade ago uh, and if you go and do some history you would say that at first, the data warehouse was just a platform for doing reporting, and, and reporting was only batch reporting to see what had happened, you know, last month. Yeah. And then we have seen an evolution of the warehouse going for more, you know, uh, ad hoc uh, workloads, then for more on the predicting work workloads, so we can start doing some, what we used to call data mining, and now we call that data science but uh, just don't want to get into the buzzwords. <laughs> but, but you know, we are, we are uh, adding more cap capabilities to the, to the warehouse, in fact, because it's a, a great platform, because information is there, it has history, it has integration. So we add the, the prediction part of, of the analytics then. And now we can see that uh, uh, that's evolving also, because a couple of years ago, we were talking about um, maybe activating the workhouse that was the the word we used uh, and it was like how can we driven more real-time analytics or real-time workloads into the the data warehouse and i would say that now it has, it has shifted to, to to the cloud and the cloud brings you know and and let me say this i'm talking cloud as technology right 
Yeah. Tell us technology gives you some capabilities that maybe other solutions don't. So you have now elasticity, you have integration with other uh, services, you have it available everywhere to, to say it so. So we can now add to the warehouse more functionality, more use cases, like you know, having a data product that can be uh, shared not only with the with our organization but with, with the rest of the world. Maybe we can have uh, these real-time feeds even more real time, we can have, you know, uh, like a data marketplace or a data sharing strategy in, inside the, the warehouse. We, we can have APIs or services, uh, you know, running into the warehouse. And, and again, I, I'm just using a lot of technical words uh, and in purpose, but, but the idea is we can still mature in the, the warehouse because the foundation of that is a, a, a very pure set of integrated data and that brings you and that enables you to, to do a lot of interesting things on top of that i think that's that's what we are seeing and, and i think I, I think we are going to see more things coming on that right right and and what about some some of the new um data warehousing emerging technologies that we see on the cloud now such as you know snowflake redshift um are they just another data warehouse, but running uh, on the cloud, or are they providing some different capabilities that is not provided with traditional data warehousing like Teradata or Oracle technologies and the others? That's a that's a tricky question, and I'm not sure how much I can get into that because I'm one of I work from one of the vendors in the history, but let, let's. Uh, phrase it like this. I, I think those new warehouse are bringing uh, the capabilities I, I just mentioned because they are running on, on cloud infrastructures. But but I, I I can tell you that that the all the uh, warehouse that mentioned like Teradata or like Oracle, those kind of companies are also bringing their solutions to the cloud. So what I would say that we have you know maybe closing that gap of of having the functionality that the cloud brings. Right. Uh, into this, and I don't like to say, but it's what the market sometimes says, legacy platforms, because I, I'm i pretty sure we are not legacy platforms, you know, but those kind of new functionalities are bringing into this legacy platform, so it's going to be like a modernization of these platforms. But uh, I think the, the good thing of that is that uh, the marketplace is you know, expanding. So we have a lot of different choices and a lot of different uh, solutions to to you know to, to take from, and instead of you know just saying that you have to pick one, maybe you start to, to build in your ecosystem from different ones, and that's one point. And the second one is that maybe some of those solutions that you mentioned are more targeting. You know, as I mentioned, I'm working from mid to to enterprise. Maybe those kind of solutions are very very good for for me to to that say small organizations and they are starting to, to do a great work on, you know, uh, again, bring, bringing that gap smaller for organizations that didn't have even a warehouse and now they can build that very easily. Gotcha. And, and, and from, from also your experience, when, when, you, when you speak with, uh, you know, with, with organization in, in the field, do, do you see now it's, it's more of a competition between vendor versus vendor or technology versus technology and when i say vendor versus vendor you know for example oracle versus ibm kind of approach or is it technology meaning traditional data warehousing versus data lake how, how is how is how is customers are perceiving the, the competition are, are 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 they perceiving that as this is something that they should get into or uh, they're trusting the technology or the vendor how, can you tell us a bit about that yeah, I, I would say, uh, and I like that question. <laughs> I would say that the, 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 the vendor versus vendor competition has has uh, became become part of of the other bigger competition, which is as you as you mentioned, technology versus technology, or architecture versus architecture, or even more strategy versus strategy. So, so we've seen in the past, and and we are starting here to to, to dig into the next architecture pattern that we're telling. Then, the yeah. data lakes emerging and and when we, we travel the first years of, of adoption from data lakes we, we've seen that and, and we're still seeing that i mean uh 
data lakes competing uh, with data warehouse. And it was, you know, sometimes that happened only on customer mind because they read some article or they thought that they heard something about that. Yeah. And they started to put uh, that kind of competition. It was not like, okay, I will choose this vendor versus that. I will choose data lakes instead of data warehouse because data lakes are cool and data warehouse are our legacy. And and we have we are seeing that kind of you know com competition right now with cloud, which is no, I have to go to the cloud because cloud is cool and on prem uh, it's legacy. I, I don't care what, what what's running on prem, which I should go to the cloud. And that's something that's, you know, it's true about that because we're seeing that the cloud brings a lot of capabilities and a lot of um, benefits that maybe the on-prem infrastructures doesn't, but it, it doesn't mean that you have to go just because, you know, it's like kind of mandate and you should follow that because it's written on stone. It's, it's not that something that you should see as a competition and, and that gets us back to data lake versus data workout, which is in fact data lake plus data warehouse so so maybe today it's on-prem plus cloud instead of just competing you know one strategy versus the other and, and that's why i would say vendors are inside that one you, yeah. it's like you compete one strategy versus the other and then you just see the vendors inside that strategy I, I fully agree with that. I mean, being myself also uh, in the field and seeing customers around and we get into discussions, they, they want to sometimes replace systems that they've been using for 20 years plus with, with some new trends because, you know, some other big company like, you know, Google or Uber is, is doing that. And, and, they, and they fail to see the, the, the reason uh, or, or the value that they're trying to achieve. They don't have this, the actual strategy or vision. They just want to follow what they're reading on someone's blog because that person says it's cheaper it's it's uh, it's new it it can be you know uh, scale uh, in, in massive uh, ways and all that they, they want to jump into that ride and and be part of it and, and that i believe is is totally wrong because it it, it not every technology is, is suited or suitable for every use case or every organization organization should be focusing on what's working if if you're let's say legacy i hate the word legacy uh, but yeah. legacy technologies as were are working fine and they're doing their job then keep keep them rolling if you're getting value if you have some new use case then uh, and that use case requires that you know new certain technology then bring it in but but you need to, to really be uh, um, aware of why you want to bring this new technology? Do you have the requirements? Do you have the variety of data? Do you have the volume? Do you have the velocity that, you know, all the, the three Vs, for example, when you talk about big data? And if, if the answer is starting with no, then maybe you should reconsider. And in and, and, and some cases, I believe, even with a huge data, even with the huge velocity, these traditional technology are still able to, to handle the scale of, of, of the data. I, I know you know, for example, some some vendors having their their database are able to do real time uh, uh, ingestion or capturing of the data and, and analytics on top of that without using any of the new buzzwords. So it's it's really important to uh, focus on on the vision, focus on the strategy, on the value that you're trying to do, rather than just following on on the buzz buzzwords. And which is something we will discuss uh, uh, in more details in a second. But before we jump into that, just to to wrap the data warehousing. Uh, you know, uh, points here that we're talking about. Would, would you say that the logical data warehouse architecture or concept or the enterprise data hub was the peak for, for the data warehousing, traditional data warehousing world, or, or there has been some, you know, new advancements in that area as well? Well, I, I'm, I'm not sure that, that you just have to, you know, to, to tie the logical data warehouse just to the, to the workout. Uh, architecture. In fact, it's something that is more related to the whole ecosystem because uh, I would say that that we are moving to a world where you have more and more pieces, more specialized pieces, as I was mentioning before, where where you are you know bridging that kind of technology tools and capabilities from different tools from different applications into one big application that works as as a whole. Uh, and, and I'm not talking about just being monolithic, I just 
talking about you know the strategy that you're putting in place you have like this uh this and i would say repository but you have this data strategy where you have all your information and your applications consuming from that mm -hmm. so uh you're coming to a place where you will have more and more tools or more and more applications accessing that that information and and that's what's you know bringing the the logical warehouse architecture or infrastructure whatever you place you would like to, to come from uh so i would say that it, it's going to evolve uh, i mean it, it has to because if if not you you won't have you know the new capabilities that that you need and and, and for as i mentioned before you're going to have sharing strategies or, or API services kind of strategy with all the microservices that it's also a buzzword that's very, you know, sounding very loud on the market. So that can be bring together to, to the warehouse architecture or to the logical warehouse architecture if, if you want. And so I, I for sure would say that it should be evolving. Right. Yeah, yeah, I agree on that. Um, let let let's bring some of the guests as well. Uh, comments here. We've got uh, V saying hi from Brisbane. Hello, V. We've got Mustafa. Hello. Um, not sure where he's from. Uh, we've got Sean from Sydney. Hello, Sean. And then Mustafa, he has uh, one question, which I think is is linked to to the second topic that I would like to ask from. Uh, ask you actually um, and he's asking do customers know data warehouse and data lake are not competitors lake is framework and data warehouse is scheme any comments from the guests uh so on on the first side i would say that customers have, have learned uh from failure that that uh warehouse and lakes are not competitors uh, as i was saying before uh, i would say that uh, we have faced a huge, uh, like, com yeah, let's say competition, but we have faced a huge competition uh, on the warehouse industry, in the warehouse market from, from data lakes uh, and technology behind the data lakes. Uh, and customers have, has, have learned from, from, from failure that it was not competition, but was more like bringing together two capabilities. And, and I would say both are architecture patterns you you have you know different architecture patterns inside the, the data warehouse you know those that like in mon those that like kimball uh you have semantic layers you have uh you know different uh, stage of the data from ingestion to integration to maybe aggregation or publication you have that kind of you know flow inside the warehouse you have the same into the day like data that you can have Raw ingestion, you have have your speed layer going inside the, 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 the lake, you know, pulling raw data into the data lake. Then you have something that can be similar to integration of data. Maybe it's something more on the curation because you just don't waste a lot of time integrating that data. You just try to, to clean it a little bit and, and maybe to match keys uh, yeah. to, to bring that some value to, to other information. and you, for sure, you will have an access layer on, on the data link that brings that data uh, in a more accessible way for for the the rest of the the community. So, so I would say if you look from you know ten thousand feet, it will look pretty much the same uh, warehouse and data link as, as I mentioned because you have you can have the three same information layers on, on them. But for sure, they have they are serving very different you know uh, use cases. You, you have like a, a quick and dirty and very huge volume data ingestion in your data lake, which is something that you can do on the on the data warehouse, but probably something that's not going to be you know very economic uh, or, or 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 in one scale because it's going to be more expensive than using something that that the technology that it's running under the data lake but uh but again we are talking about architecture focus not technology itself and and if i can bring this a little bit uh further i think that the competition we faced was not only because of the architecture pattern and in fact it was not that much the architecture pattern rather the technology that was behind the architecture pattern and, and 
and Hadoop, which was the, the first, I would say, step to starting to build data lakes because it was a distributed file system, which was very cheap. It ran under commodity hardware. It was pretty uh, easy to deploy. Uh, and I would say just to deploy, and that was the first uh, you know, mistake that customer made. Uh, it bring a lot of uh, noise to the market that you know, uh, customers starting to say that, OK, this is something that is cheap, it's new, uh, and it's going to, to be great to have that. Uh, and because it has the same capabilities, and it's, I would quote unquote, same capabilities as the data warehouse, because, because we can ingest data, integrate data, and access data, it should replace the, the, the data warehouse. And one step further, we've seen uh, the big technology companies like you know Facebook or Twitter or Yahoo, LinkedIn, whatever Silicon Valley giant you want to name, they have this data lake and, and Hadoop approach. So if they are doing that, I can do that because that should be the way I should go. And and I will pause here and will say, okay, that was the first mistake. You can compare your maybe financial institution or telecommunication company with a Silicon Valley company because it's from, from the ground, it's built differently. You have like, I, I don't know, 50 very successful years in the, in, in the market or even more, which is great, but it's something that is on, on your DNA that's telling a way of doing business that is very different from the Silicon Valley giants that have, you know, maybe five years in market, but 10 at the most, we have a different mindset. Uh, they are very, you know, develop, developer intense. They have a lot of uh, people and resources working on technology because they are technology companies. And that's, and that's the, the key point. It's a technology company working with technology. So it, for sure, they can make any technology work. But for the rest of the company, the, let's call it the kind of enterprise and more traditional companies, they're not technology companies. So trying to make work to make work at a, uh, a solution that it was very developing intense. Uh, it was like kind of a crazy mistake that no one see that coming. Yeah. Uh, and, and that was, I would say, the first side of the, the, the equation that, that failed. And, and, I, some, and I sometimes uh, like to, to say that you can blame the technology of that because Hadoop is a great uh, distributed file system with a lot of great tools on top of, of that, that work pretty fine, but they asked to do a lot of things that wasn't meant to do by the technology. And and I can recall for, for the Star Wars fans, the, the, the scene where Obi-Wan talks to Anakin and, and says, you are the chosen one, you were supposed you know, to, to bring value and save us, and now the data lake costs a lot, and, and it's not like that, you know, it's, it's like, uh, I, I mean, Hadoop is a great technology for doing very specific use cases, and if you try to make it work for wherever, and you, you want that you, when you wake up in the morning, there's the yellow elephant preparing coffee for you, no, that won't happen. It's not the, the way that technology works, you know? So, I so I, that's the, the first mistake, and... and yeah, and I, I, guess, I, I, I guess yeah. we, we all agree, you, me, and I think uh, even, even Sean here, um, uh, he's he's agreeing with uh, most most of us statement that th there is no real competition here between data warehousing or or data lake. Each has its own use cases. Each should be used according to specific requirements and should be used at the right place and for the for the right use case accordingly. It's 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 matter of choosing um, the right tools. I would say at the right time and and obviously at at the right place. It's not uh, it's not thing. To, to follow the, the big giants, like like you said, in technology, just because they're doing it, you should really look at uh, the requirements that you have, the needs that you have from the users across the organization in order to, uh, uh, you know, utilize such such new buzzwords or technologies. And Sean here is saying um, that they're, they're using S3 for our data lake capability, which then partially feeds uh, Snowflake as our database. And, and I guess, uh, it, it has a specific use case for you, Sean, for your organization, and, and it, it is justified to be used that way. And, and I guess that's the right approach to go for uh, implementation of, of such technology. 
Um, carrying on here, we've, we've got Amjad Hijazi. He's saying AJ from Auckland. Looks like we're family. Amjad, hello, all you people in Auckland. Um, we've got Jason uh, Sharp here he's saying hello from Sydney. And he is also agreeing that not all companies are in the business of technology and should be careful to not follow uh, herd mentality and replicate what large technology companies do. Absolutely agree with that, Jason. Uh, Mustafa is saying um, he's from Pakistan. Hello, Mustafa, and cheers to you. Um, Amjad is also commenting um, any ecosystem will need data. How to convince retailers, for example, on the necessity of sharing some of the data with the main hub to allow proper analysis. That's where you will create the win win situation, which is something I also agree on. Jason saying here. A, a data lake besides a data warehouse provides ability to optimize both absolutely I've, I've seen some customers utilizing both words again it just uh, about the use cases and about uh, uh, the vision and strategy that you that you have and we'll talk about this um, more in a few seconds and let's have the last comment from Mustafa he's saying true uh, data lake can't be a source of, of data warehouse all right, so so moving forward um, here, Sebastian. Let's let's talk more about data lakes. I mean, uh, being also in the field uh, and listening to many of the customer stories and you know reading many of the analyst reports as well, we've seen that data lakes has has a high percentage of failure. Um, from your own experience, can, can you in you know in, in one two lines tell us what, why you think that has happened? Yeah, uh, what I've seen, and I think it's really related to the, the conversation we just had before. Mo most of the failure has been, I would say, in two ways. First, trying you know to, to fit a square into a circle, uh, because they tried to accomplish with one technology something that wasn't planned for that technology to do. I would say that was, let's say, the the, the hard failure because you hit that kind of that wall. Uh, and, but, but the most important one, and, and, and I think it's the one that is usually missed, is the lack of planning and, and, and the lack of governance on, on, on what you are trying to, to do. And, and that's why I was telling, you know, the data mess and data strategy, what, what, you, what you really need. Yeah. And, and I would say that um, I have seen failure because uh, most of the use cases that the data I was trying to, to accomplish have, didn't have any business related, you know, um, objective, you know, it's just, okay, we have, let, let's take the example of the, the retail. We have this um, um, web page that has, you know, uh, information that, that brings to us a lot of logs and, and we can just feed the logs with the clear stream from, from the, the website and put that into the data lake and it's going to be cool and we will have a lot of, you know, uh, really cool use cases to, to experiment on that. And, and and if you experiment on that, it's great because it, it's, it's a start, but you need to figure out which is the business value that you're going to, you know, to, to take from that. If the business will, will have, you know, some return, like for example, be more able to, to run better campaigns to, to, to you know to target you Sam, instead of just target you know anyone in Sydney because they have information from the web logs that tells what you like. I think that's great. That's a, a very you know, key business indicator that you're doing the things right. But what I've seen most of the time is that they just experiment because it's like a cool technology toy to experiment and you try to load and run for example a, a, a machine learning model on top of the those uh, analytics uh, sorry on top of those data those logs to, to to see what happens but if you don't if you can tie that to you know again to a, 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 a bring value to the business it's going to hit again a wall on that and and, and the lack of planning of what information also you should bring to the to the lake because it's not the same that you have you know you can go and grab that uh, web log because it's it's uh, it's easy to do that but but maybe it's not what the business is is really needing because you have like five percent of your products selling 
on, on the website of your retailer. And then you have a lot of information that's, you know, coming from, from logs from, from I, I don't know, so we, we can just see information from the video cameras that are running on, 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 the, on the supermarket. And maybe that's, you know, more crazy thing to do, but it has a really specific use case that the business is looking for because, you know, they have 95% or more of their business running on-prem on, on, on the supermarket instead of the, the online store. So, so having that kind of planning and having, you know, or being fully aware of what you should bring to get together with what information, what come first, maybe what applications are going to be um, built on top of that. That's what I see has been the main failure from data lines because it has been like a kind of a low that, you know, because you start to experiment, you continue to experiment, you still being experimental, but then you have to start being, making that into production to start, you know, uh, getting the dollars that you are paying for that infrastructure and, and the people that are working on that because it costs money. And again, if you want to lose money, that's fine, but I don't think it's what most enterprises want to do. It's, I would say it's exactly the opposite no so. one no one wants to lose money that's that's for sure and again again like like uh, we are reconfirming the point it's it's strong choice of technologies for not for not having uh, the, the right vision or strategy uh, uh, or, or real need for that and many people get get fooled by thinking oh it's open source it's uh, runs on commodity hardware this is going to you know reduce it's, it's not true uh, technology uh, even if it's open source will still cost you money and that money because you need to employ resources whether that's infrastructure or actual people who knows what they're doing and uh, that will take time and time is money and and um, you could be actually uh, ending up spending much more than uh, you would be spending on on propriety kind of software that is proven to be matured and and successfully over the past past decades so this is um, something that people really need to to be uh, careful of. Don't be fooled that if something is open source, it means it's going to be cheaper or free because it's not. But that's based on experience. That's based on many of the feedbacks that I have seen. Uh, many of, of of the customers that I've interacted with uh, in the field has. Yeah, yeah, right, and so, the same. Yeah, the same with, with with the cloud as the guy was mentioning with with their S three data lake. S3 can be a great solution and it can be very cheap also, but, but again, you need to be very, you know, laser focused on what you're bringing to the solution because it's going to be cheap, but if it doesn't bring value in the near or mid term, it's starting to be, you know, a, a cheap, but expensive, you know, agreed, agreed, fully agreed. And, and now with, with, uh, you know, um, with, with the latest trend or buzzword that I've seen in the market is, is data mesh. And then this is some, some sort of new um, architectural paradigm shift, as, as the author has called it. Uh, and it's, it's for people who doesn't know it, it's, it's about creating uh, data as products and, and utilizing that triple D or uh, uh, domain driven design kind of approach in, in designing their you know, enterprise data architecture. I've, I've made um, an episode on, on my podcast, the, it's episode four, I believe, if you wanna have, have more details on that, please go watch it but but from from your experience and also again from what you have seen sebastian um what is the fuss about this data mesh and and how do you see it uh, being actually implemented or used in in reality okay so first of all you should go back and watch that episode because it's really cool and and then also uh you know i haven't seen that much on, on, on customers. Uh, I mean, that kind of traditional enterprise customers, again, I, I haven't seen much going into the, the, the data mesh approach, or maybe they start to, to, you know, to ask about that, so that's all. So, so I've heard about this, what you can tell me about that. Uh, I would say that I, I've seen more on, on the technology kind of, you know, online retailers or uh, or sorry, e-commerce kind of business that have more like a, a, you know that um, a technology men mentality and, and and as I mentioned, other companies that are more technology related. 
So I, I haven't seen that much on the field, and I would say that it's, uh, at least for me, a, a, a kind of experimental solution, which has a lot of uh, advantage, if you say so, but has a lot of things that I would say will impose some kind of you know challenges. Uh, and, and, and I mean, as you mentioned, um, we're talking about data products, we're talking about uh, distributing uh, the, you know, the data, and, and I think that uh, for, for data products, I think we can handle that also on, on, on the data warehouse. I mean, we've, do, we've done that in the past. In fact, we, we created data products, we created incremental data products, uh, both on, in the data warehouse and in the data lane, because that's you know the approach you need to take and, and how you, you, you bring things. But what is different maybe on, on the data mesh is that you're, you are talking about uh, a, a domain, more like an isolated domain approach. Each data pro belongs to a, to a domain, and you, you you bring that domain to life. And, and I think that's you know that's great in in a way of thinking because uh, that's what we should be doing also for for data warehouse and and data lakes. And I've seen that in, in very governed kind of companies, we have put in place this kind of approach, and that's working pretty fine. But what I see as a challenge today for 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 the mesh approach is like uh, I I think it would need a, a lot of technology besides that to work to make you know uh, and and let's call this on the fly integration because if you think of the idea of having different domains uh, and separate domains in different technologies or different places. After all, you need to integrate that kind of information. And, and, and I'm not saying that monolithic is good or is this bad and distributed is good or is this bad. I would say that sometimes you uh, you need to get uh, rid of monolithic when it, it brings you a, one, one, just like one point of failure. But, it, but sometimes you just get into that trap that you, you need something that is integrated. And, and, and I was just saying, while I was saying that, I, I was thinking that it's kind of ironic that a kind of monolithic architecture, like a warehouse or data lake, is usually running on distributed applications, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of ironic. But uh, I would say that uh, after all, you need to integrate. You can have different line of business in your company. You can have different branches. You can have, in fact, different uh, business models, but you have like one co corporate uh for you for your company you can have one ceo you can you, after all you need to integrate all of that and, and i mean it's a silly example but uh, what i'm trying to say is that you can have different domains you can have separate domains but you will need to, to pull that information together with other domains and i think that's the tricky part of, of a, a distributed or like a mesh architecture you need to throw a lot of compute or a lot of technology uh, under that to make that work if you're not having that in, in a single place. And when I mean single place, I'm not meaning, you know, one big, huge computer running everything because it can, as you mentioned, it can be a logical data worker, which is a data worker platform or analytical platform plus a data lake or plus a you know, distributed file system, whatever you can call that. Uh, but I mean, after all, you need some kind of integration, and 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 I would like to to see that working. Uh, I, I will I will be following this trend very closely because it sounds pretty cool, but at least for me, uh, it, it imposes a lot of challenges. Uh, and and not to mention what brings you know in 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 fact in governance and what you should do with metadata with because having things. This separate in different parts of the world, maybe yeah. you can, you know, you have to be very careful on what's your metadata and lineage uh, solution. And, and for solution, I mean, you know, the strategy. Not, I'm not talking about the, a tool. You can do that on a spreadsheet, but you need to be okay. very, you know, uh, focused on that because if not, you will. Uh, we're going back in circles. It's going to be a data mess instead of a data mesh. No, I agree. I agree. I think I think when I, you know, think of data mesh, it's similar to the evolution of development. You know, going into DevOps, uh, and and th this is uh, what data mesh is trying to do is is trying to separate uh, uh, different business units, creating microservices here and there, 
but again uh, we we have the frameworks but but it's not yet mature to to cover that kind of scope of architecture so it, it will take some time if ever to 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 have uh, you know data mesh as a standard i would say architecture approach to be used and, and just like you i'll, I'll be really interested to see the advancement um in that area um, yeah so and, and maybe just one comment on, on that maybe it's not that we are again competing i i would say why we should have you know a data mesh instead of a data lake or a data work or maybe we can have you know like the speed layer and and the huge amount of raw information in a data lake architecture whatever technology it's running on maybe we can have a data warehouse as your main analytical platform where most of your prime time analytics is running more of most of your production analytics is running and maybe you have like a mesh approach where you are distributing data for maybe for monetizing monetizing your information or maybe as, as an example of, of retailers for, for you know maybe making your suppliers able to access your information whatever that you know it's the better approach so maybe we are seeing just an evolution of the logical ecosystem that's bringing one more architecture pattern into, into it I agree. I agree. So, so it's, it's really all about, again, what we started with. It's all about business strategy. And after that, you come up with the right data strategy. So you should first decide what, what you really want to achieve from, from business value perspective, vision, and then everything can, can follow that. Um, Sebastian, I would like to, to end our conversation with, with one last question. Uh, which is uh, again I, I would like to to hear your your experience or your thoughts opinion H how should users and users who are watching us uh, suppress the urge to follow market trends and and why is it dangerous to follow buzzwords in general uh, but the, 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 the false illusion with false word with buzzwords is that it's just that it's just a word and and, and you need to 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 bring value that's why that's why we're working for in this right we, we are here to, to 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 help the business uh you know grow to help the business have uh more value from their data and we know it's, it's you know i i don't have to say that but i would say it, uh, data is the most important asset in companies today so so we need to pay attention on what we're doing with with the data and 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 i would say that uh we need to to whatever architecture pattern you're following you need to be sure that that architecture pattern you know brings your the capabilities and that's one of the words that that i like when i talk with, with users when i talk with, with it i do that but most with business users i would like to to tell them the word capability which i think it's key because value and capabilities is what you need you need capabilities that you know bring uh your data uh, in, into the state that starts to, to bring value for, for your business. So I would say that whatever you look, whatever you call that pattern, whatever you technology you use, you need that technology to be flexible. You need to be, uh, let's say, customers or user centric. You know, it should be enterprise wide, it's something that should bring that capability that you need to be able to ask, to access whatever you need from wherever you are in, 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 in the company. And, and as you mentioned, it should be very, let's say, democratized. So the users themselves can, can grab the data and do whatever they want with the data because they are the, the, the experts on that. But to do that, you need to have those kind of capabilities and you have to do to, you know, to have governance. Uh, and that's another key word that sometimes we in, in the IT business like to say that governance is like a tool and that can be more wrong. Governance is like a practice and it's what you do with your data and what you do with your, you know, your strategy to, to, to know that you're putting the right uh, information in the right place and the user will, do, will know what to, 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 to look for, will, will know that it's accessing the right things uh, and and having said that, I would say that one more thing that they should look for is simplicity, and that's one of another key point of architecture, right? It should be simple. If it's not simple, maybe you're doing things the other way. So uh, again, you can, as a user or as a people, you can read whatever blogs you want. If I 
read my blog, don't trust me, <laughs> just go and, and, and see for yourself uh, everything that I'm, I'm telling you. You should be, you know, looking for what brings value and, and what brings value in the fastest and easiest way. That's what I think the key part is. And that's what you should be planning for, right? You should be planning for, for that instead of, you know, just seeing, I will grab that uh, technology and that architecture pattern because it's what I've seen in the news yesterday. I agree. I agree. And that, that's well, well said, Sebastian. Don't, don't feel the urge to follow uh, these these buzzwords. Be curious, learn about them, understand what they do, but uh, be picky when it comes to choosing the technology for your business requirements and business needs. And just don't just do it because everybody else is doing. What what really matters is to have more revenue, obviously, if, if you're in that business, to have more customers, to, to get more value, to reduce the cost that you have, to enhance the efficiencies in your operations and all that. So if you can achieve that with Python code or with big data, it's 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 a choice uh, that you should be really careful about. Don't jump into something just because everybody is is doing it. Um, we will we'll pick the last two comments from the audience here. Most of us saying agree. Open source has no license, but very high support cost with no guarantees it will live forever. Absolutely. And Jason is saying innovation comes in how we blend data and analytics by passing thinking about logical integrations inhibits innovation. 100%. I agree with that, Jason. Uh, everyone keep these uh, questions, comments, feedback coming. Let's keep this engaging. Uh, we are re getting to the end of our show. And, and Sebastian, um, somehow I have, I'm having this new theme in my show to make uh, unconventional ends. And, and I would like to ask you today because I see um, lots of instruments behind you. I see guitars, I see keyboards and some others. I would dare and, and maybe ask you if you can pick any of the instruments and, and play something live to us. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's my home office, but also it's my like, you know, relaxing place. <laughs> I, I have just one room for, for everything. Uh, okay, yeah, I can try to do that. Uh, I mean, if it's okay if I can, you know, like sing Spanish for you. Sounds great. Anything. I mean, sorry for putting you on the spot, but I love to put people on the spot. So bring that <laughs> guitar and right. give us some Spanish song. Go for it. Let okay, let's try to do it. Put you. If I still have some some voice after you know a, a whole day of working. <laughs> Oh, I That's have good. like a cover. Go for it. Okay, let's play. This is a song from uh, a guy in Argentina. It's one of our, you know, one of our rock songwriters. Mm -hmm. Alguien se acerca y comienza a hablar 
Me quedo piola y digo que tal vamos a pescar dos peces con la misma red. Desperdiciados son los que vendrán y los que se tachan no me importan más. Los carceleros de la humanidad no me atraparán dos peces con la misma red. That was brilliant, Sebastian. Thank you for that. I didn't understand any of the song lyrics, but it sounds great. But the music were brilliant. Thank you for accepting my challenge. This is really brave of you and well done. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, on, on your podcast. I think it was really fun. And this, this kind of crazy end, you know, <laughs> it was great. Why not? Life is too short. Let's be crazy. And they say IT people are not too fun. We are the most fun. Just, that's just the proof sure. of that. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks again, Sebastian, for being on the show. Um, you take care and we'll speak soon. Sure. Thank you, Sam. And, and goodbye to everyone. All right. And this leaves us to the end of our show for today. I would like to thank everybody for joining us in this uh, uh, podcast. And of course, I hope you did enjoy the end. As usual, I would like uh, to ask you to do me a favor. Do like this video that you're watching, whether that is on YouTube or LinkedIn. If you're watching on YouTube, please do subscribe to my channel. It does help me to boost the audience and reach more people. And if you're watching this on LinkedIn, just simply follow me, add me uh, to your connections and let's get the conversation going. Next episode is going to be uh, having the topic building AI for everyone. And that is going to be a discussion on fairness and trust. Until then, be safe and see you soon.